Home to the Royals, Red Phone Booths, and Gordon Ramsay, London is a city I've always seen myself enjoying for its cosmopolitan, big city energy, its food, its fashion, and its accent. In this third episode of My Abroad Diaries, I experience the marvelous London dining scene, explore many iconic, beautiful neighborhoods, attend some fashion events, and explore a city I have dreamed of visiting for so long. We stayed at Buckle Street Studios the first three nights, this lovely hotel near Shoreditch, Although I was extremely excited to discover London over the course of five days, I was also very overwhelmed at this point in my exchange as I had just begun to settle in Copenhagen and therefore found it hard to be in the moment throughout the trip because I felt I had to go through the motions of feeling comfortable in a new place all over again. Despite that, I did so many fun things and came out of my trip with a better understanding of how I want to be spending my time and energy and what projects and hobbies I want to be pursuing moving forward. Hello, just got to the hotel. I had my flight this morning at 4 a.m. It was brutal. No, it was at 6. I'm on my own, which is like making me feel really weird for some reason. I don't love traveling by myself. Like just the traveling days are so uncomfortable. And then when you get to the place where you're going to be staying, I always feel so dépaysé. Makes me feel so unwell. So I just need to get out of the hotel. Yeah, I'm going to my Peachy Den appointment. I'm so excited. I'm wearing their pants right now. They have a pop-up in London right now. I'm in London, by the way. And then I have a dialogue showroom appointment, which I really don't know what to expect. So I'm really excited for that as well. Discover some cool brands, try on some fun pieces. I'm going to do a lot of walking. I feel like it's the perfect way to see the city. Then I have agency drinks. going to meet my manager for the first time in person. I'm so excited. She's from London. And Henry and I are going to Piata for dinner, which I'm so excited about. I think it's a tasting menu, which is always so much fun because I always feel like I get to try things I would never order otherwise. This chef is a Michelin star chef something like that so it's really awesome i've been slowly adapting to copenhagen and i feel like i finally just feel good about being in copenhagen i feel kind of settled in after two weeks and then the fact that i just am leaving now for five days i just get really stressed about traveling stuff i don't know i feel like i'm having a hard time being excited like i'm literally in london for the first time it's hard getting somewhere just being completely on your own i feel kind of a pit in my stomach but we're gonna fill it with a yummy matcha and a yummy snack hopefully so let's just start walking i think that'll clear my head to just be out Outside and take in the city. Also, this coat is Aritzia. I feel such imposter syndrome when I'm at these fashion weeks because everyone I feel like has the most extravagant clothing. And I feel like I wear a lot of thrifted stuff. It like stresses me out a little bit. But I know that as long as I dress in things that I like, I'll feel good. And that's what matters. But anyway, yeah, let's go. After dropping my suitcase off and changing, I set out to the Peachy Den pop-up store in Covent Garden to take a look at their latest collection and get some Mimi pants in a new colorway. Their store was so lovely, I am obsessed with their pieces, and Isabella is such a girl boss. with Lana for some drinks before dinner at Piata. This dinner was actually insane. We got the 10 course meal, which jet started with these feta egg filled cones and feta filled eggshells, I think. These were so phenomenal. We immediately knew we were in for a treat. I'm kind of scared. Mm, whoa. It was so good. It's yeah. unlike anything I've ever tasted. Yeah. They also served us radishes and olive dirt as a palate cleanser or something. I don't know. It was so fun to eat though. We got drinks. I unsurprisingly ordered ordered a whiskey sour while Henry got some berry sweet drink. Next came the cauliflower dish, which was topped with kiwi and fish mousse with fresh bread on the side, funky and delicious. We had sashimi, my fave, placed over an herby sauce and topped with caviar. This next one was the coolest dish because it required us to unveil the insides on our own. This silver ball contained this tomato sauce with chestnut for me and with meat for Henry. My first time trying chestnut, it was more soft and meaty in flavor than I expected. The main dish was salted cod coated in nori, followed by vegan carbonara for me and some type of meat dish for Henry. 
We got a second round of cocktails, amaretto and Shirley Temple sours, followed by a cheese dish, which I couldn't eat. I just, I cannot with strong cheeses. Then dessert began. First round was this rhubarb based dessert with foam and fresh rhubarb, which I had never tried before. It was gorgeous shades of pink and super refreshing. Round two was a bee made up of honey ice cream with a frozen yogurt base and some honeycomb, which our server sliced out of a huge piece for us. This is the strongest tonic that we have here in the UK. Thank you. So it comes from Shropshire. It was so good. We ended with some coffee and confiserie to energize us and help us digest. Truly such an incredible dining experience. Having these types of meals where you have no idea what will come out next is my favorite. Going to get breakfast. The next morning, we grabbed buns from home for breakfast. They have a bunch of different flavored cinnamon buns, which are a favorite pastry of ours. Henry tried the hazelnut bun, and I had their pistachio cinnamon bun, which had pistachio marzipan inside and was so decadent. Fueled up, we began our trek towards central London, stopping to rest in St. George's Gardens on the way to give our legs a short break. I had been wanting to buy new books for a while, so we peeked into Scoob Books where I picked up some new reads I'm very excited about. Afterwards, I stopped by some showrooms, which were really cool. I especially loved the Completed Works one. Their jewelry is so stunning and unique. I loved how they had their models walk around the room as well. We grabbed a quick bite at a random joint in Soho afterwards, and I got matcha and Noxy to keep me going on our sightseeing slash hiking across town day. Then I saw the Buckingham Palace for the first time. I don't know why I thought it would be a lot bigger and grand than it was, but it was really cool to see the guards do their thing and keep a straight face. <laughs> That night, we grabbed drinks at a family friend's house before heading to Home Slice for some pizza in Neil's yard. We got this massive pizza, half meaty, half margarita, accompanied by Aperol Spritz, obviously, and an espresso martini. Hello! Being in London during Fashion Week, a big part of me not wanting to really partake in Fashion Week when I was there was feeling like I just couldn't dress adequately. At the end of the day, I should be dressing in clothing that makes me feel comfortable, that is fun, that is true to my style and true to what I like. I feel like that often means dressing in thrifted items for me. I feel like my love of fashion started at the same time as I discovered thrift stores in Montreal, so whatever. I know a lot of people are probably like, what the hell? Why are you making such a big deal out of this but I think for a lot of people actually what you wear is a big part of your identity and how you present yourself to the world it says a lot about you and it's a way of expressing yourself and all that so all that to say that London reminded me in a kind of unconventional way of why I love fashion and what I love about fashion and that's not dressing the way I feel I should be but more so dressing in things that I like on myself that make me feel confident and that are unique and fun and so that brings me to the sponsor of this video which is thread up as you guys probably know by now thread up is an online consignment thrift store i'm obsessed with that up this time around they're launching spring shops and i created mine it's at the link in my bio you can shop it i selected a bunch of items from the site these are all items that i would buy myself but i actually just need to cool it you can also use my code ava for 40 percent off your first order be quick because i only selected maybe 40 something items yeah check it out now i'm just gonna show you a couple pieces i picked up for the spring this is the first outfit i put together with items i got from thread up i love long sleeves in the spring as you 
start to shed the layers and this one from brandy is just such a classic it goes well with everything i also love longer skirts so i picked up this beauty which will be perfect for warmer days i also got a couple tank tops some more casual than others which are perfect for layering one of my fave pieces i got is this plaid mini skirt it is so adorable and fits like a glove i can't wait for it to be warm enough for me to wear this on this day, we grabbed pastries for breakfast. I got a super tasty cheddar chive scone I devoured while Henry tried a blueberry crumble pastry. We ate outside near the old Spitfields market before heading into the chaos to peek at booths and try on sunglasses. We wandered to Brick Lane next to do some thrift shopping, not without peeking at the food market first. We actually got full on testers. The food here was insanely good. I also got a matcha, which was super refreshing. <laughs> The market was overwhelming. There were so many nice things. I wanted everything. I think I prefer less curated shops where I can kind of decide for myself what's nice and what's not so that I don't feel the urge to purchase everything I lay my eyes on. <laughs> Done with shopping, we continued exploring the area and happened upon another bookstore where I purchased six new books. This was the highlight of my day. Buying new books might be my favorite thing to spend money on. I truly feel excitement like no other when I think about starting a new read. Afterwards, I stopped by the Fashion Collective show to see some up and coming designers shop their work on the runway, which was really cool to see. I later met up with Sadie to grab some matcha and an egg sandwich at Café Kitsune. This was such a pretty coffee shop and the matcha was just what I needed after so much walking. We spent the afternoon shopping and going into charity shops around Chelsea. At night, we met the guys at the Chelsea Pensioner after they got back from the Chelsea game and then headed to Sophie's Steakhouse to feast. I got this burrata while everyone got steak free. A great ending to a very packed day. Good morning, preparing to check out of the hotel. It's like a mini apartment, we could have cooked here. We have like an oven, a dishwasher. It was really, really great. I don't know why this time around, I felt so anxious about all my commitments. All the events, instead of being like, ooh, that could be fun, I was just stressed. I'm already adjusting to being in Europe and then packing and leaving, coming to London. The like biggest, most urban and intense city was just like not really the move. I've just been having a hard time enjoying it and feeling lonely very easily. And so coming here and just experiencing that kind of all over again in a different setting i'm so overwhelmed today i think that i just want to go to a bakery pick up some pastries maybe a matcha read my book i just really need a chill day and then tonight i'm going to dinner with izzy i am very excited to spend time with someone from home because i just really miss home but yeah we had a really nice few days and i got to explore a lot of london I actually went to chelsea south kensington those were like my favorite areas so pretty we're near shortage we Went to Brick Lane yesterday. London is really, really big, but I'm glad that I got to kind of feel out different areas. I have been reading so, so much. I already read two books in Copenhagen, I think. Read The Idiot, and then I read The Perks of Being a Wallflower. The Idiot, I did have to push myself to read it. The protagonist just didn't really speak to me. I find it hard to read protagonists that are like younger than me sometimes. Although The Perks of Being a Wallflower, he's younger. It's just like the way that she talked about certain decisions, certain ways of thinking. I just didn't really get into the story. I just found it kind of boring. The love story was kind of disappointing. I don't know. It is objectively a good book. It's well written. There are themes of like language and stuff which can be really cool to read into but it just really didn't draw me in. It wasn't my favorite. And then The Perks of Being a Wallflower, I scarfed down in two days. So easy to read honestly and just so incredibly good. I wish I hadn't seen the movie before. I didn't like that I kind of knew all the plot. So if you haven't seen the movie, read the book first. So yeah, I've been reading a lot especially since I'm not watching any shows. I'm not watching really any movies right now because it just takes up way too much of my time. I get started on a show. I just binge it constantly. I've been watching just like clips of The Real Housewives on YouTube and I feel like that keeps my screen time to a lower level. So when I came to London, I went to first this used bookstore called Scoob. It's near UCL campus and I think it's where students like donate their books. And I picked up these two books, As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. I've just heard so many great things about this a classic and I want to read it. I'm definitely not going to read it now. I'm in way too fragile of a state of mind. I'm going to read it when I'm happy, test my happiness, bring myself 
myself back to a low. No, I'm kidding. And then I picked up Jeffrey Jenid's Middlesex, which is massive. This is going to take me a while to read, which is good because I really want all these books to last me <laughs> throughout my exchange. Won the Pulitzer Prize, and I'm such a sucker for paratext. If you tell me a book has won the Pulitzer Prize or any prize, I am like 20 times more likely to buy it. And if the cover is pretty, I'm going to buy it. Yeah, I think it's an intergenerational book. I'm pretty sure. And then I went to Brick Lane yesterday. There was this bookstore, and I went in. That was one of the highlights of my day yesterday getting all these books. I got pretty much all the books I had on my wish list, so I'm so happy. First one is Clara the Sun by Kasuo Ishiguro, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature and a number one bestseller. I have no idea what the story is and I kind of like that. I don't really want to even read the back because I want it to be a surprise. I feel like I often go into books knowing what it's going to be about or like studying them, so knowing a lot of information and sometimes I find it nice to just dive into a book not knowing anything about it and just discovering it as you go. So that's kind of my vibe for this book. Then I picked up no one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. This book was discussed in my literature class as a possible read for our last book. We got to vote on what book we wanted to read. I actually voted for this second because it sounded so interesting and I think it's about like an influencer which I don't know I find kind of interesting to read about but I find it kind of funny that that's integrating literature these days but it says it's about what happens when real life collides with the increasing absurdity of world access through the screen which is so relevant. I'm not really a snob when it comes to the internet entering literature so I'm excited to read this. Then I picked up my first Murakami book, Norwegian Wood. Heard so much about it. I think it's a love story. Not sure. I think it's sad. I just feel like it's time for me to read my first book. He has so many and I hope that I like his style so that I can read like a thousand. It is a man, right? Haruki. Then I picked up Bunny by Mona Awad. So my manager actually posted about this on her story so that's why I got it. Also pink cover, burnout novel, ring a bell. I really like the burnout novel genre and it's often women writers which I really like. I like reading women. Then last I got The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I was actually just looking around the bookstore and I just really liked the book cover, Shocker. And then I read the back, literally right up my alley. This is the book I'm gonna start today. I'm just gonna eat and enjoy reading. I'm so excited. Let's go. The next morning, I moved into Sadie's Res, where I stayed for the remainder of my time in London. We headed back to Gales in the morning for a snack I enjoyed while reading near Bedford Square. I started the bell jar on this day and was eating it up. <laughs> Later, we headed to Covent Garden where I picked up this Oreo cupcake for Sadie and stopped into past trash. This is such a good thrift spot, so many good pieces and reasonably priced for the level of curated that it is. I was really excited about my new book, so I decided to grab a matcha and go read in the park at the end of the day. I love hanging out in parks wherever I'm traveling so I can people watch and relax. I feel like a park can say so much about a place and its people. It's a place locals go to hang out and relax. It's where people kind of let their guards down and do things they love and take out whatever book they're reading at the end of the day or in between work hours. And so I feel I get to glimpse into the lives of locals in a very unique way whenever I set up camp in a park for a little while. For dinner, I grabbed some Italian with Izzy where we had such a nice dinner and a much needed chat. I find so much comfort in seeing people from Montreal when I'm abroad. It just makes me feel less lonely. We shared bruschetta as an appetizer and then she got a salad while I got pesto pasta with sun-dried tomato paste, which was insanely good. <laughs> On Monday, I met Izzy and Lana in Notting Hill for a bite at Beam. I got their halloumi wrap, which was phenomenal, and the girls got coffee and juices. We did some thrifting in Notting Hill afterwards, stopping into Lover's Lane Vintage where Izzy got her first Chanel bag. I got to see the iconic colorful townhouses as we walked around, which was super fun. Got this scarf, same as Bella Hadid, apparently. So colorful. I've been wanting just a nice scarf. I'm about to walk through Hyde Park and I'm gonna try to find some matcha cookies. Just had delicious brunch. I 
I walked home through Hyde Park, sitting down to take in the beauty of this grand green space and let the sun melt into my skin for a little while. This was much needed. I just got my period, which is why I've been so emotional, but I also have like really intense sugar cravings, so I need a matcha cookie. I'm finally going to get my matcha cookie. I'm so excited. I was craving a matcha cookie all week, so I went to Genki to get one. Shout out to everyone who recommended it on Instagram. I was actually desperate for one, and this one was insane. Gooey, sweet matcha. <laughs> On my last morning in London, Sadie and I grabbed breakfast at Espresso Street where I got the avocado toast with pickled onions and pickles on top while Sadie got scrambled eggs. Toast, avocado, and matcha. I hung out here for a bit, reading and watching people walk by. This was a great way to end my busy London trip, taking it all in one last time while enjoying a good book. Thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video and don't forget to shop my spring shop at the link in my description and use my code AVA for 40% off your first order. Next Abroad Diaries, I am back in Copenhagen, so stay tuned and see you next week. <laughs>